Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jason Rockman here, and welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour. This is episode seven, and uh, we have an amazing guest this week. Very, very excited about this gentleman uh, being on the podcast. He's somebody that, you know, if you talk about guitar playing, you talk about rock and roll, you talk about Ozzy Osbourne, um, you talk about integrity, this guy has it all. And um, he was nice enough to agree to be on the podcast this week, and uh, we're very, very excited about Zach Wild joining us today on the Rockman Power Hour. But first, let's say hi to my co-host, Ryan Stick. Ryan Stick, what is going on? Oh, dude, I'm so excited to, well, I loved editing this interview, but I'm so excited for the people to hear this interview. Yeah. Because you and him, Rob, you have a little bit of a, a little bit of a history there. You uh, met on OzFest when you were, I don't know, on in a band called Slaves on Dope and were the first band to be signed to Ozzy and Sharon's label. You like how I, I name drop for you? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Yeah. You can't sound like a, a braggy jerk. Douchebag, yeah. <laughs> if I do it for you. <laughs> but it is quite amazing. And how many people can say that? Listen. You and uh, three others. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I was yeah, I was lucky enough to spend a bit of time with with Zach um on Ozfest two thousand. Um, but it was the first time really chatting with him one on one. Uh we met briefly. Uh, a couple of times on Ozfest, and we touch on that in, in the conversation. I actually walked by him once when he was partying pretty hard with the Pantera guys, but we, we touch on that in the interview. <laughs> and, uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I'd like to thank this week's sponsor, SubversiveSisters.ca. Now, what is Subversive Sisters? Well, um, it's a single mom in Toronto that decided to start her own business. Uh, and And what I love about this, they take the two most opposite things and merge them together bad words and fine china and <laughs> I can't, right i couldn't check this out so she'll source these um these old like royal dalton royal albert style um plates and then she'll put her own little spin on them <laughs> you see that fucker in charge and then uh, this one as well so i bought a couple of these after finding her on instagram and i just thought her stuff was so original and so different and uh, and this week she is our sponsor on the podcast. So if you use the code Rockman, you will get a, a 15% discount on any of the stuff that you order from subversivesisters.ca. And like I said, these would make very, very rad Christmas gifts for the, um, well, for the unique um, gift receiver in your uh, on your list, because these definitely are for everyone. But what, what's great about them, Ryan, is you, you take a, a double look, you know, like you look at them and you're like, oh, that's a nice little, th wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got all kinds of great, um, great stuff on her website. And again, if you use the code Rockman, you will get 15% off everything you order. So again, thanks to subversivesisters.ca for sponsoring this week's episode of the Rockman Power Hour. I think awesome. I, I, de I definitely see some of this stuff in your future. That's for sure. Because I think you I am a fan of profanity. <laughs> right. That's one of the that's one of the beautiful things about being able to do this is, you know, <laughs> five nights a week on show, um, I've got to make sure by hell or high water that I don't drop a fucking F-bomb and it is the hardest thing ever. Can you imagine? Yeah, I, I see you broadcast and there's like a little vein in the side of your head uh, constantly beating as if there's some sort of, uh, you know, Mr. Miyagi type of sensei in your head at all times yeah. saying, no, no, Daniel, son, no. And, and if anybody knows yeah. me, you know me. And how, I mean, can you imagine, spend, okay, imagine this, spend 25 hours with me, Ryan, without me swearing. <laughs> impossible <laughs> dude i debate carrying around a swear jar when we hang out especially when you're in traffic like it'd be <laughs> awesome <laughs> you would be, you'd be a very rich man anyways um this week's episode we have zach wild um zach wild is the absolute legend uh behind so many great songs with ozzy osbourne um he's forged a 20 plus year career with his own band black label society he's got a brand new album coming out and um we're very, very excited to welcome him on the podcast. You gave me some stuff to ask him and uh, to refer to. So we touch on that in the interview. So uh, without any further ado, let's go to this week's guest, Zach Wild. Really happy to have on the Rockman Power Hour with us today, uh, Zach Wild. Um, Zach, it's it's a pleasure to be chatting with you formally. Uh, we've met before. Uh, I showed you right before we started recording. Yeah. The time you were nice enough to uh, to let me don the, uh, the target guitar over my shoulder with that fucking st strap made out of a chain. Like, how much pain do you suffer from 
like using that thing for so many years. I've been married for over 30 years and I have four children. That's no pain at all. What are you talking about? Come on. Uh, let, me ask, <laughs> let me ask you iron, something. Iron, made of iron. Iron. <laughs> Let me ask you, and and seriously, I mean, I, I got to ask you, how how good does it feel to be back out on the road? Because I know that's kind of where you like to be. I mean, I mean, it's so funny because everybody says that, you know, oh man, you must be excited to be. I was just like, but I was home, you know, the first show we did when we went back to the rave was 22 months when, you know, when the world shut down, you yeah. know, in Milwaukee, we were rolling with the Milwaukee chapter, did that show. And then we were like, oh, we'll probably be home for like two weeks, a month, and then we'll be back at it, you know? Yeah. And then uh, and then 22 months later, we're on the same stage, you know, so it was almost two years, you know, to the day that we ended up was our last show. And we played at the Raven Milwaukee again. But, uh, you no, know, when I was home, you know, because I'm, I'm always whether it's with Black Label, rolling with the boss, with Ozzy, rolling with the fellas in Generation X, Experience Hendrix, Zach Sabbath. I mean, I'm, I'm home for like, I'm like 10 days and then we're rolling out with something else, you know, whether right. it's actually whatever. So, um, so I always cherish those couple days I'm home. I love, you know, waking up in the morning and having golden force in the morning with my wife watching the sun come up and everything, like, you know, so, and then spending time with my family, walking the dogs or whatever. So it, it, I, I was able, fortunate enough to have, almost two years of being home, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. So, so, so I can spend time with the family, but I mean, I, I love both though. You know I mean? I, I, I know some guys are just like, I can't wait to go home. You know, once they get out on the road, they're like, I miss home or where I, you know, to me, I was always just like, that's the reason why we have pictures of Jimmy page up on the wall. And then, the, you know, in your bedroom when you're 15 years old, it's just, yeah. cause that's what you want to do with your life. So, um, when I'm out on the road, I thank the good Lord every day for me being able to do what I love. And then, and with the people I love being around. So, and then, you know, so, and when I get home, I'm, I'm home. So, but, uh, no, it's great being back at it again, but, uh, you know, during that, the whole COVID time when everybody we were all at home, I cherished every moment of it. Yeah. And I think for you, probably the reason why you're able to roll with it is because you got a good balanced life. Like you're happy. And a lot of people aren't, you know, when they're not on the road, they're not happy at all, you know, and they're maybe well, running from something. You know, that's the secret to life anyways. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. hundred like, percent. You know, people go, man, how do you, Zach, how do you, you know, maintain having a, a you know, wife and a kid, you know, when you're torn, I go, you have to like your situation. I mean, if you're yeah. not happy with your situation, change it, then, then you should get out of that situation. Yeah. I mean, in anything, you know what I mean? It just, you know, it really is the truth, you know? So, I mean, if uh, we're just being around people that, that, that are, you know, scumbags, I mean, what are you, what are you around them for? You know I mean? Like, what am I doing hanging out with this party? You know, it's just like, I mean, like life's short, man. You yeah. know what I mean? You, know, you, you can either be happy or miserable. Choose what you want to be, you know? Yeah. And I, and I, and I, I tend to see that you're, you're on the happy path, which, which is pretty inspiring for a lot of people, you know? I mean, you know, I, mean, I always saw, you know, when we were doing a eulogy for Vinny, that is, um, you know, after Vinny had passed away, they're just like, it's just like, if you're going to, if you're going to think of Vinny and Dime in any, any way and, and, you know, honor them, it's just like, those two guys love being alive. So, yeah. you know, like they love life. Like put it this way, there wouldn't be, it, there, instead of being like 10 minutes, five minutes, not one minute, not one second being miserable, it would be like if something, be, you know, bummer happened, it would be like, wow, this really sucks. It'd be like, well, what are we going to do? How about you just round up the fellas and we'll have a big barbecue at the house? <laughs> you know, yeah. Round up the pool, you know what I mean? So it was like you could either be miserable or happy. I mean, just yeah. decide what you, you know, you don't need a therapist for that. I mean, it's just it's real simple. It's funny. I'll, I'll never forget my introduction to you was uh, backstage at Ozfest on 2000, and you're talking about Vinny and and um, and Dime. Um, I'm walking by a trailer, and all of a sudden, a chair just comes flying out the window, and I look over. I'm like, "Holy shit!" And people are like, "Yeah, they're just partying in there. Don't worry about it." <laughs> just another day at the office. Just another day at the office. Um, yeah, so I've I've had a chance to sit with uh, with Doom Crew Inc. and uh, man, you know what, what I what I admire about you is you always deliver solid records, you know? Um, and what I didn't know 
is the way you write. I thought you guys all got into a room together, but you write everything and then everybody else comes in. Is that a new system or is that what you just did for uh, this? The way it's, always, it's always kind of like, you know, with Neil Young and Crazy Horse, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. So, you know, it's just, uh, you know, because when I'm, when I'm writing, I mean, I, I just, always, that's always the fun of it. You know I mean? Like, you know, Salvador Dali, you give him a, a, a blank piece of paper and you give him 64 crayons and you let him have at it. You know what right. I mean? So, you know, I mean, that's the whole joy of it is coming up with stuff. And then, you know, once you get a rip that you're happy with, you know, and then it just takes a life of its own on and everything like that. And then, you know, then obviously coming up with a melody and then writing lyrics, you know, so I, I mean, just putting the whole thing together, you know, I mean, it's just like building the foundation of the house. You design how the house you want it to be. And then you start putting the, the wood frames up and then we start putting it all together. And then it starts, things starts coming to life. And then we, then you put the furniture on the inside, then you paint it and you do, you know, I mean, so yeah. it's just, um, no, I mean, it's just no different than when you were 15 years old, putting up your legs up on a black Sabbath posters and everything like that. You know, you know what your room, how you want your room to look. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's nothing worse than when you have to take them all down because you get the new one and then you got to do that spacing perfectly. And yeah, your mom you gets mad. There's, in there somewhere. there's pinholes all over the wall. What are yeah, we going to do? a great picture of Randy Rhodes or something. We got to cram it in there somewhere. <laughs> you know, but, uh, no, I mean, that's the, that's the whole fun of it is great, yeah. you know? So, but uh, yeah, I mean, with, with the new album, I, mean, we, I recorded all the guitar parts, double the guitars to a click. I mean, the way we always do it. So this way, when Jeff and JD came out to the Vatican, that, you know, Jeff would just listen to the song and go, all right, Zaggy, what are we all coming in? I go, we'll come in right over here, you know, on this part here. And then, then we'll go to this part and this part and blah, 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 blah. And then Jeff would just listen to it, play air drums a couple times and go, all right, let me go in there and track it. Next said Jeff would take like two, three stabs at it and he'd be done. And that's yeah. it. You know, I mean, back in the old days, we, you know, with Oz, you know, No More Tears or Miracle Man and all that stuff. I mean, we'd be, we'd be jamming these riffs and just sucking the life out of all these songs. You know what I mean? Because it's just like, you know, when you're around a, a, a group of great musicians, it's just, you know, it's just like when a guy gets traded from one football team to another, a wide yeah. receiver, Jerry Rice gets traded from the 49ers and now he's playing with Tom Brady. He's with the, you know, he's with Tampa Bay or the Patriots. He doesn't, he can get there in the middle of the season and Tom will go, bro, I need you to run this route. He's like, no problem. I'll be there. Great musicians all, can all just roll with each other. It's like, Zach, what key is this thing? And they have sharp or whatever. All right, cool. You know, whatever. You just, you play. Right. So, uh, the whole thing is, um, yeah, just Jeff, Jeff must have tracked 30 songs in probably in a week. Wow. And so, yeah, and you never know. You know, the guys will come out there. I'll write, you know, because my, my wife is just like, well, you, you know, you guys are going to start working on a new record. I'm like, all right, well, when are the fellas coming out? She's like, well, you got about a month before the guys come out to the Vatican. I said, all right, well, that means I got a month to write a record. So, you know, you just start writing, you know, and then uh, – you know, when the guys come out, the guys are out for a week. I, in the morning, you know, you could hear uh, free falling on the radio and then just go, man, it'd be great to have something with just as simple as with three chords or whatever. And then you end up right knocking on heaven's door or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the spark was you hearing, you know, Tom Petty, free falling. Right. You know, and then you end up, it just inspires you and you start writing. And then, like, if you would have, if you would have never told me that, I would have never got that you got it from that song. You yeah. Know I mean? Right. 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 So that was the, that was the spark and lit the fire. You know? So, I mean, that's a great thing about writing. Uh, speaking of influence, um, I'm from Montreal, obviously the home of one of the greatest guitar players ever. Um, and one that's all, yeah. often left out of conversation. Awesome Frank Marino. Yeah, Frank Marino. Yeah. Um, how, how important was Frank to you? Without a doubt. I mean, just like a pretty mind blown. I mean, I, you know, I still listen to him all the time, so you don't get inspired, but, uh, no, like the first time I heard, you know, the live record, you yeah. know, uh, and then, you know, my guitar teacher, Leroy Wright, turned me out because he was a big Frank Marino guy. And I uh, loved Jimi Hendrix and obviously Frank Marino and Robin Trower and everything like that. So, but I mean, hearing Frank Marino, it was just like, um, you know, because everyone always takes, you know, pentatonic scales that it's just like, it's a, you know, it's just a simple scale and this and that and yada, yada, yada. But I mean, the way Frank plays him, it's just the Formula One version yeah. race car of a pentatonic scale. Just, you know, the possibilities and what and how musical he is and everything like that. So, 
Uh, and then, you know, now I remember when I was hearing the, the Power of Rock and Roll and then the Juggernaut album. And obviously all the other, you know, going back and hearing all the other records. But I mean, it's just, uh, it, it's just his technique and his musicality is just amazing. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that's how I was inspired me. But I still, you know, I, I still listen to him. I was just listening to him yesterday. You know what yeah. I mean? So, it was just, uh, no, he's, he's amazing. It's funny. I got to see him play about probably about 11 years ago in Montreal. And um, it was, I couldn't believe the, 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 his his dexterity still, like just everything. He's just yeah, a beast. No, it's totally, a beast. Totally. I mean, it's just, it, and it, but it's it's musical. He's speaking. Mm. You know yes. I mean? he's just playing exactly. Fast, and it doesn't say anything, you know, so. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, we were talking about, uh, we touched a little bit about uh, On No More Tears and uh, obviously the 30th anniversary this year for that record. Uh, everyone's been talking about the reissue. Uh, what did you think when they unearthed that version of Hellraiser with Lemmy? Oh, it's great, man. I mean, you know, it's just, it's so funny because you're talking about Frank Marino and Lemmy and everything like that. I mean, there was a bill. Motorhead, I think, was headlining it. Then it was Ozzy. And then Frank Marino was on that bill. With Randy Rhodes. So it was Randy Rhodes and Frank Marino on the same bill. So that's pretty mind blowing. But I mean, uh, but yeah, I mean, Ozzy, Ozzy and Lemmy have known each other like forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, it's just, um, and Lemmy, you know, I remember Lemmy touring with us and stuff like that, and just hanging out with him and partying with him and drinking and everything like that. Just great people and just, just an awesome guy. I remember um, I lived in LA in 1999. Uh, at the time, our manager managed Motorhead, and I remember him giving me the keys to Lemmy's apartment and sending me over there to water his plants and get his UPS oh, packages. I, yeah. And when hey. I walked when, when I walked in there for the first time, oof, let me let me just say, yeah, I mean, well, it, was, another, it was it was it was another an guy that never never spent a second of his life being miserable. You know what I mean? No, no, no he was just like I'm going to live my life the way I like living, and that's it. And if you don't like it, then you can leave. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you, not a lot of people talk about it anymore, but, um, in, you, you were obviously in the movie rockstar, uh, and, uh, tell me a bit about the squeal in rockstar, because there's a, there's a point in there when they're trying to get that squeal, oh, yeah, which, is, which, that which is your like signature that. squeal. Tell me a bit yeah, about the that. Harmonics, yeah. The, the Billy Gibbons. Yeah. So, uh, no, it's just, it's just pretty funny, man. You know what I mean? They're like, Zach, what are those things called? I go to like, pinch harmonics. You know, what are they? Squeals? What are they? I go, yeah, call them squeals, whatever you want to call them. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that was pretty funny. But that was a great time making that movie, though. We had, a, you know, Jennifer Aniston, Mark Wahlberg, you know, Steve Herrick. I mean, everybody involved in the movie. Dominic West and everybody. All great people. It's pretty crazy when you look back and think of all the stuff that you've accomplished, man. You know, it's, uh, it's it, you've had a fun ride. I, I, tell, I tell the wife that all the time. I said, that, now can, you, can I get a, but it's not helping with the foot massages and the shoulder rubs. It's not helping at all. So, yeah. <laughs> Lastly, I just wanted, I know um, I, I'm a massive coffee fan um, and uh, also a good friend of mine, John Fenton, swears by your coffee, um, but the Valhalla Java. He always tells me about it. So I finally got, picked up some um, about a year ago and I really liked it. Now, how involved are you in this coffee? Oh, yeah. Well, Father John, but um, no, it's just uh, well, Glasgow was friends with the, the gang over at Death Wish Coffee. Right. And, you know, then we talked about partnering up and stuff like that, you know, because, you know, here's me and you drinking coffee so all the time. So it's just like, I said, well, send me like a, a dark roast that has like two shots of espresso in it. You know what I mean? Just like kind of like bitter, but, you know, like, but just tastes great. Right. So, I mean, because I don't put anything in my coffee. I just drink it black. You right. know what I mean? Just straight up. Because otherwise, you know, you start putting stuff in it, you can't, it loses the, you're losing the flavor of the coffee. So for me anyway, so it just, um. But no, they sent me a couple different batches and stuff like that until I got the one. I was like, man, whatever one this one is, this is the one. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that's how we just, you know, got it down to the, the one that is about, you know, the Odin Force. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, the gang over, I just saw the gang over there uh, just recently when we did one of the shows, you know, when we were in town, but uh, on the East Coast. Yeah, they're great people. And, then, you know, it, it's it's great rolling with them, man. So you're still enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, without a doubt. I drink it every every day, man. <laughs> All your water, bro. Uh, listen, man. Uh, I know, I know, we got you got other people to talk to today, but I just wanted to thank you again for taking the time. Um, I'm continued success, and I'm really, really looking forward to people's reaction to this record. I got, I, like I said, I've gotten to sit with it for about a month now, but right before today, I really got to sit and listen to it, give it a real good listen, and there's some great stuff on there, man. So you know, I appreciate it, my brother. You know, and yeah, so, uh, you know. 
Thanks, man. Thanks for taking the time, man. All right, my brother. Great talking to you again. You too. <laughs> Be safe out there on the road. All right. All the best, man. Take care, brother. Ha, how about that? <laughs> Dude, that was amazing. Zach comes off to me as kind of like a, a big personality, a big man. Is he tall? He's massive, dude. Okay, because Kevin is tall too. Yeah, and he towers and over you're, Kevin. And you're not. So <laughs> fuck you, Ryan. I, I was rewatching the movie. Hey, Ryan, Rockstar. fuck you, man. <laughs> I was rewatching I'm five the movie. Five ten, Rockstar. bro. In a half. I know, I know. No, I'm not. I'm five nine ish. Um. I was rewatching the movie Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg. And yeah. when he joins the band, they're all having this band photo shoot. And they're like, all right, everyone, you're about to play the stadium, everyone. And Zach's in the corner doing his thing. Like, you know, and Mark Wahlberg looks as tall as he is. And I just looked at the screen. It's at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. And I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> There's no way. There's no How way. many Apple boxes does he have to uh, be on Wild's level? Quite literally. Yeah. 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 Zach's a big man. He's a big dude. He's a big presence. <laughs> Um, but he's a gentle giant and that's the thing about him. You know, you think yeah. you see this big hulking man come out and play this target guitar and, um, you know, <laughs> and like we touch on, you know, the strap, I, I, I don't think he uses it much, but back then, man, his strap was like literally a, a big metal chain. And, yeah. um, the idea of, um, this guy being just such a sweetheart and, you know, he's a family man. He's super, super, um, you know, into his wife. He talks about his wife all the time. Uh, yeah. and he's, and he's super loyal to his wife. It's just, it's just nice to see that, you know, just because he's this big metal God, um, literally Viking looking dude, he, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't take away the sweetness that he has. And he's a very sweet guy. Very nice guy. I, and I also, I really appreciate, uh, you asking him about Rockstar on my behalf with the guitar squeal and yeah. everything like that. Yeah, he, he, he cracked a, he cracked a smile, but I don't think he gets that one very often. Cause I think a I lot think of people, so. you know, it's unfortunately that movie doesn't get the the attention and the credibility that it deserves and i'm fully uh, fully uh the full reason behind that is the massively horrible poster art for that movie that is why i mean that is not the poster art the uh blu-ray box whatever you want to call it the cover art for that movie is so not representative of what that film is i know and it when just, you look at the yeah. when you look at the musical quality of a fake band like steel dragon mm -hmm. like that thing you do had amazing music in it too and even yeah. though the wonders only exist in that movie it really makes you feel like steel dragon existed and at many a house party or a camping trip or whatever uh i listen to we all die young a lot yeah you know you know it's an amazing tune an amazing moment when uh you know he joins the band and all that and it's um yeah i'm really I'm really, really glad. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard Zach Wilde in an interview talk about Rockstar like that. Yeah, so that yeah. was awesome. No, no, he yeah. was, uh, he was, he was pretty, he was pretty, you could tell he was a little sidelined by it, but he was, uh, he, <laughs> he was cool about it. He was cool about it. And, uh, and of course, you know, Frank Marino, um, just oh, a dude, yeah. National treasure, you know, another one of these guys that just kind of flies under the radar. Um, but he's, you know, he's influential to so many people and he's right from here, you know, right from our own yeah. backyard here in Montreal. So it's nice to, uh, it's nice to see Zach kind of gush over Frank Marino the way he does because, uh, yeah, man, Frank's a, Frank's a legend, you know, Frank's a legend, but he is also extremely humble. Like, uh, he's a family friend and my mom and him were friends when they were teenagers. And my dad, uh, were, was a friend and also worked for a mahogany rush in his twenties. Uh, so they kind of, my mom and dad kind of met through that circle. Your and, mom and um, Frank never like, you know, no, <laughs> no, no. She, he was a little brother to her. Are you sure? Absolutely. I think your mom made it. You know, we're gonna get your mom on the podcast. We're gonna be like Ruth. We want the truth. Did anything ever happen with you and Frank? That sounds like lyrics. First of all, second of all, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's really amazing I'm that just I, kidding. I know, but I met Frank when I was uh, hey, just all a the kid. shit that you've put me through with my mom. Okay, I deserve okay. you. De you you deserve your mom is super fucking hot. First of all, let's just get that on the table. <laughs> you have been so creepy about my I mom ever since I met your mom you. <laughs> when I was dressed in a Batman costume delivering Christmas presents to your children. That is a true story and not a Mad Lib. I swear to God. Second of all. No, uh, honestly, but getting back on track, the Frank yeah. Marino thing, I met him when I was a little kid yeah. and I was amazed by him, not because he was an amazing guitar player, because at this point he had been retired and we were just visiting him like a family friend. What amazed me was he had a, a Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, a Sega Genesis and an Atari all plugged into a TV at the same time. 
Wow. And this is like 1992, three with a video switcher. And that was like phenomenal that an adult loved Nintendo that much. And I got into the legend of Zelda because of Frank, because he was, uh, his, the game was there and I was yeah. trying it there. And it's kind of amazing. Like all these years later with a Zelda tattoo and all that stuff, when you think about all that kind of stuff and all the millions of people who are inspired by Frank Marino, I was inspired by his Nintendo collection. <laughs> well, that's listen. And the other thing hmm. too, about him is like, he's, he's a real gearhead, right? He's a gearhead. He's an innovator. He's one of these guys that will, will, um, fuck around with amps and pedals and all this kind of stuff. So it doesn't surprise me. Oh, no. That he keep came up with something like that as well. Oh, you know, let me make this more. Da, da, da. But he's someone okay. we should really try to get on the podcast if we can, because I'm sure he would have a hell of a lot of great stories. Oh, he does. And uh, he's a technical marvel. Like uh, he recorded a live album and the last eight minutes didn't work. So he asked people online for bootlegs of the show. Uh, did anyone tape it? And then he literally pieced together piece by piece, every drum hit, every drum fill, every guitar note from the rest of the show kind of like a jigsaw puzzle and recreated eight minutes of five different instruments, guitar solos and everything. Wow. I mean, the guy should have won a Grammy in editing just for that. Yeah. But you know, he's Frank and he doesn't walk around dangling his uh, accomplishments and yeah. neither does Zach. And that's no. another thing I liked about Zach. He seems to be Very like this world famous guitar player, but whatever. You know, yeah. and I love that about him. Super humble, um, mm. super loyal too. You get that vibe from him. He's a loyal, loyal guy. And I love the love he has for Sharon and Ozzy. I mean, you know, he calls he calls Sharon mom and he calls Ozzy <laughs> boss. And yeah. I mean, it's kind of I I I find it very endearing and very sweet because he really does love Ozzy. I mean, you, yeah. he loves, and we didn't touch too much on it, but I've heard him in other interviews, and I know how he. I mean, he has an affinity for Ozzy and just loves Ozzy. Um, and it's just, it's really nice to see the, the level of respect, you know, that, that he realizes that he's playing with a legend. Um, and a lot of guys in his position at this point might've been, might've been jerks, might've been like, ah, fuck it. You know, like I've got my own thing. Like he's so humble. And I always like, and I love that because I get that, you know, like I feel that way about Daryl, you know, DMC. I mean, DMC is someone who's a buddy and all that, but to me, he's always the king of rock. And when you, when you get a chance to, to chat with some of these you know, if you ever become friends with someone like that, Ryan, and you know, um, mm. it's hard sometimes to, to separate the two and, and, but Zach just seems to be one of these guys that he knows full well what he's done. He knows how much he's done for Ozzy, but he still respects him. And yeah, it's, it's nice to see. And, you know, 30th anniversary this year of, of no more tears. I mean, that's, oh, I, love that album. I love that album. Yeah. Uh, everybody, you know, that's, that's the most successful Osborne record hands down, you know, and it's just all the great collaborations on that record. You know, Zach was, Zach was on that record. Mike Inez was on that record who went on to, um, to play in Alice in Chains. Um, mm. and Lemmy Kilmister, you know, from Motorhead wrote Mama, I'm coming home. He wrote a bunch of songs on that record. You know, it's, uh, uh, you, you're a reader just like I am hmm. just a big shout out to Ozzy Osbourne's book. Hmm. I love his book so much. Yeah. It's one of the best ones. It is so easy to read and that's not an insult i mean just it sounds like you're reading the transcription of an old man telling you stories in a bar yeah and it's just as friendly and accessible as it and i read that thing in maybe a day and that's because i couldn't stop reading it yeah we were in we we're on tour somewhere uh, in alabama and people were out in the pool swimming and stuff like that and i was reading i am ozzy and it's uh, just, I don't know, it's its its amazing, everybody. Everybody out there, if, uh, if you like reading and you want to hear about a young Zach Wilde joining the band and all that kind of stuff, je definitely check out I Am Ozzy. It's a great, great read. And he had, um, Ozzy, I mean, you know, mm. as you know, I mean, he has so much respect for Zach, too. And uh, Of course. And it's funny because Zach's left the band a couple of times. And, and, and I remember when we were on OzFest, he wasn't in Ozzy's band. It was Joe Holmes that was playing. Um, fascinating. And, okay. And it was weird because like, you know, yeah. his band, Ozzy's band was, um, this guy named Brian Tishy who was playing drums. It was, uh, Joe Holmes who was playing guitar and, um, this guy, Robert Trujillo, I mean, you probably never heard of him before. Just, just this guy, this kid they Dude, found. Robert Trujillo was on Ozfest and he was, um, Ozzy's bass player. And, you know, of course wow. everyone knew him from suicidal tendencies and then he went on to join Metallica, which is crazy. But, one night on Ozfest, um, I'll never forget this story. We were 
on the road, we decided that we were going to take an RV. We were not going to take a bus on OzFest, even though we were Ozzy and Sharon's band and we were the first band on the label. We were like, no, we're not going to take a bus because it's going to look douchey. So we want to be humble. We're going to take an RV and everyone, we were the only RV on that entire tour, entire tour. Some people were on two buses. We were on, and we were in an RV because we wanted to keep it Canadian. And I remember we would travel in the RV and we'd sleep in the RV. And one night, um, I think it was Ozzy's either it was Sharon or Ozzy's guy. He had this guy, Dave, that used to travel on the road with him. I think he still does when he's out there. Mm. And they reached out to us and they're like, Hey guys, um, the next show is in Phoenix, Arizona. Ozzy's flying home. Cause the, we would tour, we'd do one date, day off, one date, day off. And a lot of the times Ozzy would just fly out, go back home, come back out for the show, you know, but the other bands on the tour would go off and do little shows in smaller markets. So we were doing a bunch of shows with static X. And we had a night off in Phoenix, Arizona, and we were supposed to sleep in some Walmart parking lot. And we ended up getting Ozzy's bus. They said, you can take Ozzy's bus. So our crew drove our RV and they were so pissed, but the four of us got on Ozzy's bus and we slept on Ozzy's bus and we took it all the way to Phoenix. And when we got to Phoenix, we got two hotel rooms that Ozzy and Sharon weren't using in Phoenix that they'd already booked and paid for at the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we were in a convoy. Our bus was in a convoy. It was the Aussie bus and Aussie's band's bus. So it was Brian right. Tishy, Joe Holmes, and Robert Trujillo. So we were all convoying together. So when we got to the hotel, you know, the next day or whenever, we all got off the bus. We went to our hotel. And that day, we had a night off. And I'll never forget, Robert and Joe took us out to dinner and uh, paid for us. And we all went out to dinner with them. And it was so nice. And Robert, at the time, had played on... um Jerry Cantrell's solo album, Degradation Trip. And okay. Jerry from from Alice in Chains. It was and in the band, it was Robert Trujillo, Jerry who played guitar. This is a studio band, and Mike Borden from Faith No More. So I was geeking out at dinner about this record. And Robert said, <laughs> I, he's like, this album's coming out. And I remember because when we were recording our album in LA before Ozfest, Jerry Cantrell had just finished recording in Studio B. And he had locked out the studio for four months. And it was back when he was doing a lot of drugs. Like he's since very sober and very clean. But back then he was in the throes of addiction. And they said that at the time, there was so much drugs that were smoked in that studio. And I'm not talking marijuana, like heavy shit, that they had to repaint the studio. That's how bad it was. And it had to be professionally clean. But anyways, I was dying to hear what this record was like. And Robert, I remember, gave me a CD a burned CD to listen to. And he said, listen to it tonight and give it back to me. You shouldn't even hear this. And I got to hear the album like a year before it came out and it was great. So, um, just little back, things like back before the old accessible, uh, internet piracy days. Huh? Hey, our album came out in 2000. That was the summer. They call it the summer of Napster. Cause that was the year that Napster came out. Everyone was file swapping. P people were showing up at our shows with burned CD CDRs and going, could you sign your CD? I'm like, this isn't our CD. No, no, it's your album. We burned it off Napster. I was like, okay. And signed it. Didn't think anything of it. And there's, you know, there's Lars Ulrich fighting for the artist's rights and everyone calling him a douchebag, you know, but he was right. <laughs> Lars was right. Lars yeah, was right. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, it really made Metallica look greedy for the rest of their career in like, a sense, but no. he was right. Because when you think about how many, how many thousands of dollars goes into even the production of it. Oh take, God. Those guys a loss, yeah. you know? No, no, they I were, mean, he was absolutely right. And, and the music industry should have gotten behind him, but instead everyone was kind of like laughing at him and, and well, anyways, the, the rest is history as we know, because music's been so devalued, it's disgusting, but that's the part that bothers me because I used to, and what's funny about this particular episode, it's that, you know, muse musicians, when I was growing up, like when we got into music, we got into music hard. I remember mm. being 13 and going to, um, stay at my friend's house for a few days and his family was much more musically inclined than mine was like there was posters on the wall everywhere there was always albums being played and the rock stars were treated as such of the you know the giants that uh that the rest of the world really thought they were before you know music got devalued like we're yeah. talking about and i just remember i'll never forget like just when you discover bands and they seem larger than life and ozzy before the reality show just seemed like so larger than life and the yeah. Prince of Darkness and guys like Zach Wilde was these untouchable, 
beings like you know like hanging out with odin and the other gods up on a cloud yeah and it's uh it's funny being on the other end of it now where you know you grow up you work in enough things you'll be backstage enough and you're like ah, they're just dudes just a dude yeah no one's on coke anymore it's pretty good (laughs) (laughs) it's so true everyone's so clean now but um yeah man it's 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 crazy when and and it's funny whenever i talk to anyone from those days, it always brings me back, you know, and, uh, we've got a couple more of those people coming on, uh, in the next couple of weeks, people that I've, I've had some brief dealings with in my music career and, and over the years. And, and it's fun to, to see, a, to see where these people are at and see them 20 years, 20 something years later. And, and to just be able to have conversations reflecting on some of those things, because they're all events that marked all of us, you know, um, Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, being on a tour like Ozfest is, it's a big one, but you know, you talk to a guy like Zach, I mean, to him, it's just like, what, I've done like 12 Ozfest probably in his mind. I don't remember what year it was. They all fall into each other. And, <laughs> and, and I think back then it was when, when he was, when he was drinking, cause he's been sober for a while now. He's sobered up quite a bit, but he's got his love for coffee. He's got his love for his wife. He's got his love for the black, the black, uh, label society folks. I mean, he's, he's got a whole crew there. I mean, people love BLS. It's just such a, it's like a community, you know, it's really cool what he's built. You know who really likes Black Label Society? Greg who? Capullo, uh, oh. the uh, the the super one of the biggest comic book artists in the world. Yeah, of course, he, of course. He's he was Todd McFarlane's ghost drawer essentially. Like Todd drew the first nine issues of Spawn, and then <laughs> Greg would draw the next eighty. Yeah. And uh, that Corn album that by McFarlane Art that's oh, actually yeah. Greg's drawing. Really, so yeah. Greg loves heavy metal. I consider him like the heavy metal artist, and it's um. It, it's it's amazing the reach that uh, Zach has and the people that have been influenced by him and love his music and oh, yeah. from all walks of life, not just musicians. You know, maybe he has a rad Nintendo collection and some kid would like that. You know, <laughs> well, you never know. Um, anyways, it, it was a real treat to have him on. So uh, thanks again for for uh, for helping out with that and um, and I'm looking forward to a lot of the stuff that's coming up. But before we go, I want to thank again this week's sponsor of the Rockman Power Hour. And that, of course, is SubversiveSisters.ca. If you're looking for fine China that has a lot of fucking bad words on it, they're the folks for you. Check it out. They'll take, uh, they'll source old pieces of China and then they'll put these great sayings on them um, and they make great uh, statement pieces in your in your collection. Um, they also have uh, teacups. They've got all kinds of great stuff and it's run by a single mom um, who just wanted to start, start a sideline business and it's actually taken off for her. Check it out. Live, laugh, fuck off. So, you know, Ryan, you get put one of these up in your China cabinet or on your on your um, mantelpiece when you're in your house and someone walks mm. by and goes, oh, that's really nice. And then they read it. It just makes you double take. So I love stuff like that. So this is really rad. And uh, if you use the code Rockman, you will get 15% off everything you order on their site. Uh, if you're, and, you know, now that we're getting close to Christmas time, great ideas for Christmas gifts and uh, run by a really, really great lady. So check out subversivesisters.ca. Thank them again for uh, sponsoring this week's Rockman Power Hour. Ryan, we got a lot of stuff coming up, man, before the end of the year. We got some heavy hitters on the way. We do. We have more interviews than just John Taylor. So make sure you check them out because <laughs> John Taylor's interviews do we get yeah, busters. It's, it's crazy. John Taylor, dude. Come on. I know, uh, I know. <laughs> if you uh, if you haven't heard the podcast yet, or if you're this is your first episode, please uh, make sure that you uh, like our page, like us on our socials. You can find us on Facebook at the Rockman Power Hour. Um, you can find us on all streaming platforms. So make sure you subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Same thing if you're watching us on YouTube. And why wouldn't you watch, watch us, right, Ryan? We're just so goddamn handsome. Um, all you got to do is like the page and uh, subscribe and hit the bell, and you'll be alerted every time a new episode is launched and we usually launch them every Friday. This week was a, um, was a, an exception. We had two episodes coming this week and we might have that happen again. I mean, you know, there's so many people that want to chat, uh, you can't say no, so you got to fit them in. So we're happy to do it. And it's a podcast, so there's no rules, right? We can do whatever the fuck we want. There are no rules. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out again this week, man. It's been a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun. And uh, I want to thank again, uh, my co-host Ryan Stick, of course. I want to thank our producer, Julia Kajerski. And I uh, want to thank our sponsor, SubversiveSisters.ca. And uh, everyone else for uh, participating and uh, hanging out with us. We will see you again next week on the Rockman Power Hour.